Hey guys, so we're coming up on the end. We've got the kitchenette to do, we've got the DC wiring to do, and basically we're off to the races. So let's just get right into it. Now, of course, the kitchenette's going onto the back left wall opposite of the shower and the bathroom. It's not going to be exactly what the original design was. It's going to be something a little bit more akin to this, where we basically got three upright boards uh, along with a front, a back, and a baseboard. Now, both the ends and the vertical divider are made out of one inch plywood. This is basically hobby plywood that I got from Lowe's. Uh, it's pretty light and you definitely want a little bit more oomph to it. So the reason why I went to one inch rather than half inch is just to have some bite on it when I get the screws. So the top, front, and the back, and the bottom back piece are all one by fours. And these are just to offer the structural support uh, for me to be able to screw into. The front toe on the kitchenette is made out of 2x2. Two two. I wanted just a little bit of extra strength in order to hold back the 12 volt cooler that's going to be sitting in there, as well as the two jerry cans for the fresh water and the gray water. With the frame built out, I went ahead and put the cooler in just to make sure I had enough spacing to allow air movement around it since it will be running pretty much the entire time that I'm out in the trailer. Now it doesn't run continuously, obviously, it'll cycle on and off, but there is a fan on the end there which allows for air movement. And then putting the cans in next to it, I'm just making sure I've got the right spacing for the vertical divider that's gonna be going into it. The divider is basically to keep the jerry cans from moving around, and it also provides support for the two shelf units that I'm gonna be putting in. One just above the cans there, and one a little bit higher up uh, to give enough clearance for the top of the refrigerator to open and close. With the divider screwed into place, I installed a shelf just above where the jerry cans will be and a small piece of 1x3 in the front of it just to prevent anything from sliding out. I did misspeak earlier when I said that the end pieces and the vertical divider were one inch. They're actually three quarter inch. The top is made out of one inch and uh, got it at Lowe's in the same section that I got the sides. These are basically just project panels which are used for cabinetry and it worked perfectly for what I was trying to do. They were relatively cheap and lightweight. Though there was a bow in it, which uh, I wound up having to flip the countertop once I got it put onto the kitchenette. The sink is from RecPro. It is 13 and a half inches, I believe. I had a 12 and 7 eighths, I believe, rough opening. So it did fit perfectly in there. I had just under 13, or actually just over 13 and a half inches between the vertical divider and the end cap but a little bit of a tight fit, but it worked out just fine. Now you'll also notice there's a shelf in the larger section just above where the refrigerator sits. It looks like it is a little tight. It is not, it's actually perfect for holding the camp stove as well as a pot, a pan, and a, a top for the pot. And the front piece, I actually ran out of three quarter inch by, or I should say one by four to use as a guard there, so I wound up having to use a 2x2 two two instead. I then sanded the whole kitchenette, front and back, and rolled the edges on the front there with sandpaper. I then applied two coats of the dark gray paint that I'd used on the bed frame and the cabinets in the front. And then on the top of the kitchenette for the counter itself, I wound up putting on three coats of uh, urethane just to protect it from water or anything like that and to make it easy to clean up. Oops. 
One of the reasons for using the 2x2 two two front kick plate there, the toe guard, was so that I could use 3 inch deck screws in order to secure it down into the subfloor. For the back, I used 90 degree L brackets attached to the wood and just screwed them right directly into the wall. And after that, it's all said and done, and here's the kitchenette. Admittedly, one of the things I did forget about was some pantry space in order for you know dry goods and paper towels, etc. So I wound up finding, after a very long and exhausting search and trying to find a solution, I did find this bookcase or bookshelf on Amazon. It's bamboo and actually just so happened to match the same color as the countertop, which worked out well. So with a little bit of modification, I removed one of the shelves and took out the braces and used those to go on the front of it in order to act as a little bit of guard so things didn't fall out while I was driving down the road. So with just a slight bit of modification, some screws, some 90 degree L brackets to attach it to the wall, worked out perfectly and now I've got some pantry space. The fresh water supply was solved with these two jerry cans that I got off of Amazon. They're like three gallon. And in the truck camper I'd used a USB battery powered faucet which I found another one here on Amazon and basically it sits on the top of big water jugs and it just sits in there and the tube goes down into the jug itself so same same concept as what it would be on a water jug just a little bit of distance from it and this one actually came with a base which was good because it meant I didn't have to drill another hole into the top of the countertop it will just sit up there and then the hose will feed down through it and through the back side of the kitchenette into the water jug. So quick, easy, the charge lasts for a very long time. You could always plug it in again if you need to recharge it, but for just fresh water and brushing your teeth and maybe washing your hands, it was a perfect solution. The 12 liter jerry cans off of Amazon wound up being absolutely perfect. Big wide opening, so you can get your hand down in there. And on the top, there's an air vent cap, which is the perfect size in order to feed the hose down into. And I should point out this hose is actually a medical grade that came with the water pump, so you're good to go there. These cans also come with a brush so that you can clean out the inside of them uh, you know, after each use. And it, yeah, it just worked great. And the spigot comes off on the front here. And there's actually another cap so that you can transport water and you don't accidentally kick or open up the spigot. It's got a seal on the inside and just held water perfectly. So yeah, great investment, good buy item from Amazon for a change and worked, worked well. The sink drain is easy enough. This little device here, which attaches underneath the sink, I believe it's two and a half inch, came from Camco. Again, off of Amazon, Camco, fairly reputable company. And it'll just go down through the shelf in the back there. I'll drill a hole and drop down into another jerry can. So it'll all fit together. I've actually got these sideways. They should actually be, I don't know how you would term it vertically, but they'll be side by side facing out. And then of course the refrigerator will be right over there on the other side. If you saw in the previous shot, there was like a white fitting that was on the end of the strain hose. It's meant to be mounted to the sidewall of your camper in order to allow water just to drain out the side. That just unscrews. I took it off and was able to feed the hose down to the back side of the shelf and into the jerry can on the bottom. I did have to drill a hole in the top of that one because the uh, air filler valve that's on the top there that worked great for the faucet not so much not big enough for the drain line but easily enough just use a quarter drill and was able to open up a wider hole for it to fit down into and there we go sinks done kitchenette's done time to move on to more stuff